Allah said he would try us and test us with fear, hunger, loss of life, wealth, the fruit of our labors, but give glad tidings to those who are patient. Having patience in times of trial and adversity is relatively easy. For us to be patient in worshiping Allah when things are going well, that's the big trial. That is the difficulty. Alhamdulillahi, Nahamaduhu, Vanastahinahu, Vanastahu Firuhu, and Umanubi, Vanatabakalo Ale, Vanau the Bulla, he means Sururi and Fusina, Umin Shayati Amalina, Maya Hidi Hilla, who fala Mudilla, Womay Yudilu, who fala Hadiella. Washed and La Ilaha Ilala, who are the Hula Sharikala, Washed and Muhammad and Abduhu, Varasuluhu, Amabad. For in the Hiral Hadi Kitabulla, for Hiral Hadi Muhammadin, Salallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وشر أمور موتة تاتها وكل موتة بدا وكل بدا دلالة وكل دلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praises due to Allah I welcome you all to this evening's lecture by Dr. Abu Amin Abilal Phillips This topic, patience, inshallah will throw a lot of light into what Islam speaks about patience I would request Dr. Bilal Phillips to deliver his speech الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن استن بسنة لوم الدين. All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. Patience. As my brother introduced the topic, is a key element in the life of the believer. When we looked at the search for inner peace, this evening I will elaborate on it further. Patience, mentioned in the 103rd chapter of the Quran about which Imam al-Shafi'i had said that were no other chapter of the Qur'an to have been revealed, that chapter would have been sufficient for humankind, for them to be guided. That chapter is A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wal Asr by time. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Indeed, humankind is in a state of loss. Illa al-ladheena amanu wa amilu salihat Except for those who believe and do righteous deeds. Wa tawasaw bil haqq. And advise each other in truthfulness. And advise each other to be patient. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this chapter, small chapter from the end of the Quran, identified patience and advice to each other to be patient as being among the keys for success in this life. He stressed it above many other characteristics which are important also. Generosity, kindness, lovingness, compassion. There are many other wonderful characteristics. But he chose out of all of them two. Truthfulness and patience. Because first and foremost, 
for anyone to attain the proper relationship with God, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person has to be true. Has to be about truth. Accepting the truth when it comes to him or her and following that truth. They have to commit themselves to that truth. Belief is based on truth. Truth which has come from the creator of this world. He did not leave us to wander around blindly in this world on our own. But he sent the truth to us. The truth which we know as Islam. Our acceptance of that truth, living in accordance with it, is the righteous deeds. Holding on firmly through to the truth throughout our lives is a requirement. Even if that truth is against us. If Muslims in the world commit evil, they cut off people's heads on television and hold it up, blow up children. We know this is not right. No matter what the circumstance, it's not right. Then we have to stand up for the truth because we are about the truth ultimately. We may try to understand the reasons behind people doing this and educate others about them, but still the truth must stand out clear from falsehood, as Allah told us. And we come back to patience. Because once a person has committed himself or herself to the truth in all aspects of his or her life, then he or she has to be patient because that truth will be tried and tested. So patience, what is patience? If this is required of us, it is important for us to understand it. Ibn al-Qayyim had said that patience in the spiritual sense means that in times of grief, we stop ourselves from despairing, panicking. We stop ourselves, our tongues from complaining. And we stop our hands from striking our faces and tearing our clothes. In times of grief and stress, we stop ourselves from falling into despair, feeling the situation is hopeless, feeling that Allah has burdened us beyond our capacity. There is no way out. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told us, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah, Allah will make a way out for them. And we stop our tongues from complaining. Complaining about the trials of life. Complaint destroys patience. There is a difference, however, when we look at patience and complaint where one complains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not considered the complaint which destroys patience. The complaint which destroys patience is like the woman, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, passed by her. When she was at her son's grave, crying, screaming, wailing, and the Prophet said to her, O oh woman, get a hold of yourself. And she turned angrily to him and said, You haven't suffered what I have suffered. 
And the Prophet ﷺ turned and walked away. Then some other women ran up to her and said, that was the Messenger of Allah. So she got up quickly and ran to him, oh Messenger of Allah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right, you're right, I have to control myself. I control myself. He said, patience is at the time of the calamity. Patience is at the time of the calamity. Her complaint, you haven't suffered what I have suffered. That is the complaint to human beings. Human beings who can do nothing about the trials of our lives. But turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is acceptable. Because we found, for example, in the Quran, Surah Yusuf, verse 86, we find Prophet Ya'qub saying, Innama ashku bathi wa huzni ila Allah. I only complain of my distraction and anguish to Allah. After his sons had caused Yusuf to be lost, pretending that he had been killed by a wolf. Prophet Yaqub could only turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what he did. And that is perfectly legitimate. And that's who we should take our complaints to. So patience is real and is maintained as long as we stay away from complaining to people. People who cannot do anything for us. We're just looking for sympathy. Oh, you poor individual. It's really not good. It's unfair. Really, this shouldn't have happened to you. No, that's not true. If it happened to you, it is because Allah wrote it for you. Because Allah chose you to experience this particular trial. Allah tailors the trials for each and every individual. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked, who among humankind has the most trials and calamities in their lives? He replied, the prophets, then the, those most like them, then those most like them. And Allah looks into an individual's level of faith. And if he sees that his faith is strong, then he puts a strong trial on him. And if he sees that his faith is weak, he puts a weak trial on him. Allah tailors each and every, for each and every individual, particular trials. And we talked about the purpose of the trials, that these trials ultimately are to bring out the best in us, to bring out the best and the highest of our spiritual qualities. But unfortunately, most of us don't realize that. So when the trial comes, we complain. We bawl, we cry, we blame everybody. It's not my fault, it's everybody else's fault. Or we might even reach the stage where we blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A very evil stage. A very evil stage. But what we are called to do is to be patient. To be patient under all of the various circumstances of life. As Allah said, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ فَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُسِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah said He would try us and test us with fear, hunger, loss of life, wealth, the fruit of our labors. But give glad tidings to those who are patient. Those who when a calamity strikes them say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We belong to Allah and to Him is our return. Usually we only end up saying this when somebody dies. And that's fine. If somebody dies, to say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon is good. But we should remember to say it whenever a calamity strikes us. 
And this is what we forget. Time of death, okay. But the rest of the times, as if they're different. No. They all fall into the same category. So, when the calamity strikes, this is the expression of our patience. Inna lillah, we belong to Allah. Allah owns us. So whatever He puts on us, He has the right to do. And it ultimately is the best for us. No matter how harmful, how evil it may seem to us, we have to believe ultimately that it is what is best for us. Were it not best for us, then this implies that Allah is unfair, dangerous door to go through. To say that Allah is unfair is to deviate. Our faith in Allah is destroyed. No, Allah is the most just. And whatever He has given us is exactly what we need. So how does a person learn patience can we learn it or is it just that some people are born patient and others are not yes we see some people seem to be quite patient from the time they were kids they're able to handle things they've grown up patient where other kids just seem to fly off the handle they're here they're there don't can't seem to be patient is patience something we can learn yes prophet muhammad sallam had said wa man yatasabbar yusabbirhu allah Ibn al-Qayyim had said, if a person does not naturally possess the characteristic of patience, he can attain this characteristic by acting as if he does possess it, until it eventually becomes second nature to him. Whoever pretends to be patient, يُسَبِّرْهُ Allah, Allah will give him patience. So, it is something that we all can achieve. And that is logical, because why would Allah then put patience as one of the keys for success in this life if we are unable to learn it? If it is only those who are born with it, meaning Allah has destined for you patience, and then He gives you success in life because you're patient, no, that would be unfair if we couldn't learn it. So obviously it is something which we can learn. Now, let us look briefly at the times when patience is needed. There are three basic times. Ibn al-Qayyim identified them. One, in worshipping Allah and following His commands. Two, in abstaining from wrong actions. And three, in accepting the decree and ruling of Allah, Allah's Qadr. One, in worshipping Allah and following His commands. Two, in abstaining from wrong actions. And three, in accepting Allah's decree. These three areas are mentioned in Surah Luqman, verse 17. When he said, Ya Bunaya, Akimis Sola, what more bil maaruf, one hand il munkar, was bir alama asabak, in nadalika min azmil umur. O my son, establish regular prayer. Enjoin what is just, and forbid what is wrong, and bear with patient constancy whatever befalls you. For this is firmness of purpose in the conduct of affairs. O oh my son, establish regular prayer. This is the advice of Luqman to his son. Enjoin what is just and forbid what is wrong. And bear with patient constancy whatever befalls you. Enjoining what is just involves doing what is good. 
Forbidding what is wrong includes abstaining from wrong action. So, let us look at patience in worshiping Allah. Worship, which is not performed regularly, is of no value, Ibn Qayyim said. Worship not performed regularly is of no value. Meaning, those people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan, the Ramadan Muslims, throughout the year they don't worship Allah. But when Ramadan comes, you will see them in the masjids praying, taraweeh, fasting. Or the Friday Muslim, he doesn't pray all during the week, but when Friday comes, you see him in the masjid. The Friday Muslim. This is a person who does not worship Allah regularly. So when you ask that person, why don't you worship Allah regularly? Why do you worship him infrequently? Only on Fridays or only during Ramadan. And there are some people who only worship on the last Friday in Ramadan. A few years back, somebody was, we were talking about the preferable things to do in Ramadan. And they told me, they said, oh yeah, it's, it's also good to catch Jumatul Wida. I said, what? Yeah, Jumatul Wida. The farewell Juma. I said, what is that? You see, the, you know, the last Juma in Ramadan. That is known as the farewell Juma. I said, oh, somebody made that up. We know of the farewell pilgrimage, Hajjatul Wida. We know of the farewell Tawaf. Tawafal Wida, the last time you go around the, the Beit, the Kaaba before leaving Mecca. But Jumatul Wida, never heard of it. Something people made up. They said, yeah, if you catch Jumatul Wida, you know, all of your sins are forgiven. No. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu didn't say that. If your peer, or your sheikh, or your wali, or your whatever told you that, he lied. There is no Juma Tulwida. So, the person who only worships Fridays, Ramadan, or Laylatul Qadr, that's the other day, isn't it, right? The 27th of Ramadan. Because prayer on the 27th of Ramadan, if you catch Laylatul Qadr, that is worth Al Fishar. A thousand months of worship. So our infrequent worshiper, what does he do? He takes out his calculator. He puts in a thousand months, divides that by 12. That comes out to 83 point so many years. Huh, that's a lifetime. You catch Laylatul Qadr, you're covered for a lifetime. People who worship infrequently, this worship is not really acceptable to Allah. Because when you go back and you look at the root of why they are worshipping like this, we call this in reality uh, worship, in Arabic they call it ihtiyati or precautionary worship. Precautionary worship. What does that mean? It means that just in case just in case there is a law and he asked me, what did you do? You were a Muslim and you, I, I did worship in Ramadan. I did do Fridays. You know, I, I did have some ibadah, some worship. That's precautionary worship based on a person's doubt about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If one doubts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doubts about the existence of Allah, he has disbelieved in Allah. It's the same thing. Belief in Allah is certain belief. Belief based on certainty, not doubt. Maybe, there could be, 
just in case no that is not true belief in Allah not acceptable so worship naturally based on these thoughts has no value it's just a physical exercise just like people who are obliged to make Hajj the time for Hajj comes when when you've reached puberty and you have the economic means but what we do we find in the Muslim community if a young man who is 21 years old he's got his started out in life whatever he's got a business going he's got some money ready to go and make Hajj what is the what is his parents what is his friends and uncles that tell him no no don't make Hajj now you're young you're still young meaning what meaning you better to leave Hajj until the end of your life right because Hajj washes away your sins so if you make Hajj now you come back you got a bunch of sins you lost your Hajj so better to leave it delay your Hajj till you run out of steam you can't do any more sins now is the time to go and purify yourself at the Kaaba but reality is that you won't be able to make the Hajj Mabrur the acceptable Hajj you won't be able to do it why because you've lived a life of sin a life where you cursed people you swore at them you cheated them you did all these things do you think you're gonna be able to go to Mecca with all those people three million people from all around the world and be a good boy no no that's why I've been to Hajj a number of times and I've seen old brothers with long white beards acting in the most violent ways I was shocked people steps on their toe they're elbowing screaming shouting cursing brother you're on Hajj shut up <laughs> hey Hajj what happened to Hajj <laughs> because they had thought that they could come through and do an acceptable Hajj but Allah said Hajj you know that's acceptable la rafatha wa la fusuqa wa la jidala fil Hajj La Rafaf, no bad language. Wala Fusuqa, no bad dealings with people. Wala Jidala, no argumentation. Fil Hajj. Won't be able to get through Hajj that way. Not possible. Because it must be based on true faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as we said worship has to be regularly performed therefore patience in worshiping Allah this is a primary requirement and it's not easy worshiping him regularly it's not easy because what happens when people do things regularly is that they take it for granted you lose your sincerity you get up for tahajjud every night every night every night every night the first nights you got up there's a good feeling strong feeling there but after you start to doing it regularly it becomes a norm for you then the sincerity of it tends to go and this is something very serious because what is the use though regular prayer is required of us what is the use of this regular prayer if our hearts are not really in it what Allah has prescribed is not achieved so we have to stop we have to reflect we have to re regularly renew our intentions we have to question ourselves what are we doing is this really for Allah or is it just a habit let me renew my intention and let us ask Allah SWT to give us sincerity in our prayers in all of the various acts of our worship 
Secondly, in being patient in worshiping Allah, we have to make sure that we don't deviate from the way prescribed by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to make sure we don't deviate from that way. Because if we have deviated, then we have lost the value of our prayer. So we may be praying regularly, but we are praying a prayer which is not according to what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to do. So we have to maintain sincerity and we have to maintain the sunnah, the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, patience in worshiping Allah. It is natural for us to have an aversion to carry out certain acts of worship. Getting up for Fajr in the morning. Our body tells us, we need more sleep. Our mind tells us, I'm still tired. The pillow feels softest at the time we need to get up in the morning. So naturally, it's difficult. We have to struggle. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu had said among the signs of the hypocrites is their inability to pray Fajr. So we have to be patient here. Patient meaning holding, restraining our desires and fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, we have to be patient in abstaining from wrong actions. We have to have within ourselves a fear of punishment. And this is something that most of us have lost. As a child growing up, we have a sense of fear of punishment from our parents. In school, fear of punishment from our teachers. But when we become mature, and there's nobody who is over us, then the fear of punishment is gone. Although the fear of punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should remain. It should be there. And if we really feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then our lives would be straight. We would be following the straight path. But it's because of a lack of fear, weakness of our fear that we disobey Allah and we engage in wrong actions. Also, we should have a shyness, haya, shame before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shame in using the blessings which Allah has given us, our strength, our minds, our bodies, using them in a way which is displeasing to Him, we should feel ashamed, knowing that He is watching us, He sees us, knowing that we'll have to stand before Him and give account for whatever we have done. We should have haya, shame. In order for us to stop doing wrong actions, smoking cigarettes, and no, that smoking cigarettes is haram. It's not just makru, as some people say, it is haram. The Prophet وسلم, had told us that whoever kills himself in this life, using a knife, throwing himself off a mountain, however he kills himself, he will remain in the hellfire, killing himself in the same way over and over again. So smoking,
killing ourselves by smoking will doom us to hell killing ourselves over and over with cigarettes. If we love cigarettes that much, then I feel very sorry. When we have bad habits, how do we break them? We have to tackle them head on. Stop. Commit ourselves for the sake of Allah to give it up. We may use what is available to help us, but in the end, we just have to break these habits. Whatever we have become used to doing, continually, we have to tackle them. Whether it is smoking, whether it is cheating, whether it is lying, whatever bad habits we have developed, we have to break these habits in order to develop patience from abstaining to abstain from wrong actions. The last category in accepting Allah's decree and ruling, patience in times of trial and adversity. This one is actually among the easiest ones. Having patience in times of trial and adversity is relatively easy. Because even the non-believer, one who doesn't believe in God, in Allah, can decide to be patient in times of trial and adversity. Calamity strikes him, he says, what's the point in screaming and hollering? It's not going to do anything. So, I'll just bite the bullet, take it. That's life. But for us to be patient in worshiping Allah when things are going well, that's the big trial. That is the difficulty. And if you notice, people in general, when calamity strikes, they're in the masjid, praying, begging Allah. When things are going well, you don't see them anymore. So we can see, this is, it's easy to turn to Allah in times of trial. But still, it is for us to do so. That is required. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised a great reward for those of us who turn to him in times of adversity. As I mentioned from Surah Al-Baqarah before, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Give glad tidings to the patient ones. So there is a great reward and that should encourage us to be patient. Also, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us إِنَّ al الْعُسْرِ yusra, With every difficulty comes ease, that should also help us to be patient. Because we know that whatever calamity has struck us will end. It will not continue forever. If there's a difficult time, then ease comes. That is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, if we think of all of the other blessings that Allah has put in our lives, then this calamity becomes very small. When we forget all of the blessings, then the calamity seems so great and so big. So, in the time of calamity, think about all of the good that has come. And that will help us to be patient. And with regards to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to also be careful that we are not fooled by them. As we said before, when things go good, we forget Allah. We have the verse in Surah Munafiqoon, the chapter of the hypocrites, verse 9, in which Allah SWT said there, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ O you who believe, let not your riches or your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. If any act thus, 
the loss is their own. O you who believe, do not let your riches or your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. If anyone acts this way, the loss is their own. Ibn Abbas, when he was asked about this verse, he said, it was in reference to some Meccans, some people from Mecca, who, when the command for Hijrah had come, and they had decided to migrate along with the Prophet ﷺ, their wives and their children suggested to them not to go. Begged them not to go. They would be abandoning their homes, their wealth, the comfortable life. So they stayed back. Later on when they went to Medina, and joined the rest of Muslims when Medina was established. They saw that those who had gone ahead and made the Hijrah with the Prophet ﷺ had learned so much, had gone so far ahead, they became upset and they wanted to punish their wives and children. So Allah revealed the verse, O you who believe, do not let your riches or your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. If any act this way, the loss is their own. This is the danger. We need to keep this in mind. This is part of the trial and the test for us, for patience in this life. So patience should be in worshiping Allah and following His commands. Even in the best of times. We said it's easy in times of difficulty, difficult in times of ease and abstaining from wrong actions, fearing Allah, fearing His punishment, and avoiding doing what is displeasing to Him. And finally, in accepting the decree of Allah, whatever Allah has decided, believing that ultimately it is the best. The tsunami which has hit us, hit Muslims, over a hundred thousand Muslims have lost their lives. Somebody says, well, where is the good in all of this? What possible good could there be? As Muslims, we say, Allah knows best. He knows that there is good in it. And that is why He permitted it to take place. Whether we can see that good or not, Allah knows best. He doesn't do anything except for a good reason. So my brothers and sisters, let us reflect on Surah Al-Asr. Wal-Asr. Say it with me. Wal-Asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-ladhina amanu. Wa amilu salihat Let's put it in our hearts, make it real. Let's make that Quran real. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran. Will they not reflect on the meanings of the Quran? أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Or are their hearts locked up. Open those hearts, brothers and sisters. Reflect on the meanings. And may Allah give us all patience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Send me your mercy, send me your peace, or I am lost for sure.